All right, so this video is probably going to transpire over a couple of days for sure. Uh, the last track day just, you know, happened for the year. Uh, look, my local track, if you watched my last video, I cleaned up the coolant leak that was there on the wastegate, and I got one run, and when I pulled off, everything was cool, coolants were cool, and uh, I saw some smoke along with some other people coming, like, or some steam, whatever it was, coming out of my hood vents. So quickly popped the hood real quick. Uh, I know you shouldn't let oxygen if they're in case there is a fire, but all my hood vents are already kind of open, so we just threw it open real quick. And uh, my buddy was like, yo, there's a fire. So immediately I'm like, holy shit, you know, we got to address this. And I'm, I grabbed the fire extinguisher and he's like, oh, it's not that big. He's like, I blew it out. I'm like, oh, sweet, cool, thanks, man. He's like, oh my God, it's back. And he had a bottle of water, so just fucking, you know, dump the water all over, get this out. That was my main concern. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, dude, just soak it. If the manifold cracks, like that is the least of my concern. Obviously the, the car going down and everything else would be a huge ordeal. So here's what it looks like right now. I already took the front bumper off, the intercooler and everything else. So what you can see is the turbo blanket is crispy. Um, obviously we have a coolant leak still at hand here. If you saw, I clean everything off. Um, you can see right here got crispy. This is where the fire was. Um, and it looks like it kind of got down here by the oil feed here. The weirdest part is we can't, I can't see anything that caused the fire. This coolant line was leaking after we put the fire on, it cooled off. Let's see if I can get an angle on this. You can see, right, oh, come on, up here by the fitting. I don't know if you can see that. It was leaking out of that. So right, you can also see that this fitting has worn its way over time as well. And that's from rubbing against my guard that I put there. Um, this fitting has broken the past and that rubs against that guard, which also, if you look, rubs against the back manner cooler. It doesn't leak, holds boost, everything is fine. Um, I'll let the car sit, right? That was the first session of the day, which kind of sucks. But after that, you know, I just had a bad juju. I wanted the car to cool. I was just hanging out with some friends and just sort of trying to make the best of it. I drove the car home. I left the, let's see if I can find it. The header blanket that was on there, I think that kind of also went up. Um, it's definitely not in the same shape that it was just because, you know, whatever. But here it is. Um, you can see it got charcoaly down here for sure. Now, I don't know if it, I, right? So coolant, coolant's not what made the fire. There's no oil leak. Um, and I removed that and I drove home without that on. So I don't know what the heck it was. Unless like that tin foilish aluminum stuff on the header blanket was just resting on something that got too hot and that's not necessarily fireproof. And that's what went up. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, it's a weird mystery. Like I drove the car home fine. It was no smoke, no nothing. Car felt good, got in a boost, gave it 10 pounds and it, it drove, you know, what is what it is. So ultimately what I think I want to do is, I've been saying this for a while, man, I don't, I think I talked about it in the last video too, but the Go Auto Works kit is phenomenal. Let me preface that first. This thing has held up to some hell of abuse. Greg at Go Auto Works, thumbs up. You're looking for a turbo kit, super thumbs up. I'm pretty sure this was not the intention to be time attack raced in a little EF chassis. This thing has held up like a fucking champion. Let's make that clear first and foremost. Do you need to run lines to the wastegate um, as far as, uh, you know, cooling it? That's debatable back and forth. I'd like to keep it there. That being said, that and line is kind of having a rough day. What I would like to do is probably keep the same intercooler. I've kind of made a little mark down there in yellow. I can probably come a little more further forward, but right there right so that would give me some more room as far as if i removed this bar this would give me some more room for sure as far as being able to work on this now the as you've all seen in the past my radiator is up close and personal with everything and it is hard to work on if i needed to in a pinch so i'm thinking of maybe Cutting this bar out down here, cutting it out up here, moving this intercooler about as far forward as I can to be flush with the bumper, 
and then just moving the radiator here forward. I'm not saying to be flush, still probably a gap, but at least maybe move this radiator like on top of this, where this would be, like flush with this. Um, I would have to get probably a little longer of hoses now, that kind of sucks, right? But that would move the radiator further away from the hot bits, and I think would just allow me to have more room to work in here. That's the ultimate goal, because it just sucks, as much as I got going on here. And maybe it'll allow me to rebuild some lines to make them maybe a little more accessible. Now, I know I'm rambling a lot. I'm just trying to give you guys my, uh, my idea of what I'm trying to do here. Running a full size would be super ideal. Would just be, I mean, right, the, all of it. Now, I don't think I can do it with this manifold. I mean, look, the wastegate is probably a little bit past this bar. So I'd have to have a radiator that started like right here. If just for a reference point. And then this would be super close to it. I just, I think that's the route I'm gonna go. Um, I'm just thinking out, I mean, I've been thinking about this, maybe changing the manifolds to a different Go Auto Works one, maybe like a log. I know Greg makes the same manifold I have with the wastegate that comes out the passenger side, but the problem with that is, again, I spilled coolant up here. I'm gonna clean all this off and fix everything, but that's where I've been grabbing my coolant from, and I kind of like it. It's convenient. I mean, it's not super convenient as far as me working on it right now, but it, it's out of the way. It keeps things tidy. It keeps things like segregated. Like here's those coolant lines go to that, this go to this. It's not a bunch of T's and stuff. Um, so it's like less, I don't know, maybe less failure points, maybe more. That being said, this half size radiator, my mini radiator have been doing me a good job. I think if I got them further away from the hot parts, I could get away with, you know, a little bit more. Um, yeah. So that's that at the current moment. There was no fire, so we're cool when I drove home, but I'd like to take all this off, replace the turbo blanket, but I'd also like to make the next ASR event. But I also don't want to rush this stuff. There's one more event down south. And if I can't take my car, I can't. I still want to race, maybe my buddy Matt. That'd be a conversation. Um, I want to do this once and be done with it. Like when I say done with it, I want to be able to get my hand in there, work on stuff, and maintain what I need to, as opposed to my you know, hassle that I'm dealing with now. But I also don't want the car down forever, right? I want to get it back up. There's no need to rush into things. So, all right. This is enough for that clip. I mean, this soccer says almost eight minutes. It'll be the longest intro if you guys made it this far. Kudos. Let's see where we go from here. All right. So everything is sort of pulled apart. Not everything. You can get a glance, right? Turn, pull the wastegate off, the dump tube, radiators out. Uh, just kind of bent some stuff out of the way. So I'm trying to figure out what it was from, right? So here's the turbo blanket. Clearly it was something up in here. You can see it burnt. It's not a no name, you know, heat shield or turbo blanket, but I don't really know what it was. I mean, it did get onto the turbo blanket. The turbo, as you can see, has like some burning, but it only, you can see right where it stops, like right there ish. It was something like right here. That's the oil feed. It's not leaking anything. So I really don't, I just, I honestly don't know. Um, it's something, so there's that. So fast forward now, okay. The idea is to push the intercooler as far forward as I can. Now this little mesh, I can, you can see, this bumper was just kind of done as a quick thing to throw together. We'll try to refine it a little bit during this process, but so the intercooler, I'm just gonna push up basically as far as I can. It'll probably be, you know, whatever like that. I'm gonna take a measurement now. You can see where the pipe is, where it was. Obviously this ducting's gonna get cut out on both sides, but the turbo manifold that I'm gonna be looking at grabbing is essentially the same thing. The only difference is gonna be, so the wastegate coming out this way, the wastegate will come out, don't quote me, but somewhere about over here-ish. So that'll, uh, yes, it'll put my wastegate lines closer to the downpipe, you know, but I guess you could always clock it, like, I can clock it however the heck I want, really, right? If I did something weird like this, I might be able just to do a, Whoop, tiny little pipe going right into the exhaust to dump it or this and do whatever. Just an eyeball idea, right? Definitely gonna be some more room. I could play with these lines and the coolant lines, blah, blah, and move them around, but that's that. So now we're just gonna, this gonna be a rough measurement. I'm gonna take a tape measure, roughly see the difference here. 
Uh, it looks like if I was to cut maybe like a, like three inch over here, that'll allow the coupler to get a good bite. I'll measure over there and let's just get to cutting. All right, I'm a little out of breath. Uh, he's moving stuff around, ripping stuff off. But there's the intercooler. You can see it's pretty much right on the edge here. Uh, probably pretty tough to uh, add um, a grill. That being said, I can kind of do stuff. I could tilt the top in a little bit. Pretty sure I can, yep, I can move that around a little bit and look, I mean, I gained some. I could suck this pipe up a little bit more. I can move stuff. Um, but for what it is right now, it is, you can see, there it is, right? There's some room. So now, it already came in. I expected it to come in. I'm trying to get this done and move it, you know, as far forward as I can and then move on to the next project. So, I mean, O'Reilly's is an awesome site. Let me preface that. You can go to O'Reilly's and type in, you know, radiator. And you can filter stuff by inlets, outlets, core width, blah, 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 blah. I hunted for a whole evening trying to find the biggest radiator I could fit, and I don't want to say I hate to say this, but it's already been done a bazillion times, but the Sirocco radiator ultimately fits the best dimension. So, here it is. Looks like I'm going to probably try and do my coolant for my turbo and stuff over here. Two inlets are over here. I noticed there's little, like, tab standoffs here for probably mounting, you know, some fans on the front side, and there's some for the back side. So this is unmodified at the current moment. So let me put you down and see if I can get this in there. So here's the issue with the fan. Now, this is technically a 12 inch fan, which essentially covers in the core, but the whole overall piece of the fan is like 13 or something. So you can see there's a little bit of light coming through there. You can see my fingers. Otherwise it'll, it can kind of bump against that. And same concept over here. And you can probably split the difference. Now, People say, and I found some truth to this. I mean, I'm not saying people are just, you know, crazy, but essentially the shroud helps the car at lower speeds or at idle. When you're moving, the shroud actually kind of affects it a little bit. Um, but again, my car had no issues. Car drove great as far as coolant temps. We're just going to get that even better and more room to maybe hopefully work. So what I'm thinking is to maybe just shroud, like, I don't know, right? Make a shroud that comes around and wraps over here in between the two coolant tanks or the inlet and outlet. It folds itself up over here or something and kind of comes up. And essentially though, it'll stop here. So this other radiator will just not be shrouded. So the fan's only gonna be shrouded on like a piece, pull from there, and this will just let airflow fly through it. All right, so there it is. Intercoolers there. Now nothing, there's no actual mounts for the intercooler. It's just sort of resting on the bumper slash the intercooler piping is just kind of there. Um, I think I'll still be able to do some kind of a mesh screen here. There's quite a bit up, up in here. So I'll figure that out. This pipe might need to be shrunk just a little bit so I could kick this back just a little bit. Um, obviously no clamps on it. And I've got the Sirocco radiator in there, not fully mounted. It'll probably be something like this, or uh, this passenger is kind of hard to do with one hand, but will probably scoot itself in. Maybe I'll do a little angle like that, angling, you know, towards the front. I don't think I necessarily want it touching the intercooler, but pretty close to it, which will allow me to have all this engine bay room. And I say all, right? So let's go through this one more time here. This is gonna be something like this, right? View here with all this, that's exponential more room still. Um, now this is a 12 inch fan. I still think it would be weird. I might have to downsize an 11 inch. Not something that I, I really want to do, but if I go to an 11 inch that has 11 or 1600 CFMs, it's what I tracked it with at one point. Was it a 12 inch that did it? I can't push this all the way down there because you see the mallet just kind of stabilizing it, but you get the idea still, right? This will sit something like this. Exponential more room, man. I know this is not a lot of room uh, in comparison to some things, but this is... I mean, massive. It looks like the stock, this hose would probably reach. Might pull on it a little bit, but now this hose, I'd have to obviously change a bit there. And we need to get a filler next still. So 
overall, I'm pretty happy. I'll have to mount the radiator. I'm not, all right, I didn't want to weld the beads. You can see again, I just sort of tacked this pipe here and I tacked that there, right? Just because I didn't fully 100% commit yet. I'm gonna kind of sleep on this. This will probably be the end of the video. Um, I did order another exhaust manifold, so I'm gonna need a new T3 gasket, new exhaust manifold gasket. Uh, what else, man? Probably go with the B-Series uh, Speed Factory filler neck, probably with the swirl pot, just to make life easy, because I did have to kind of maybe see it. Oh, I don't even need it. <laughs> I cut it off there, because I was gonna weld it shut, because I was gonna shove the radiator a little bit further back, but now I got it more forward. Probably didn't even need to. Cut this a little bit so it fit underneath it. Might obviously trim that a bit more. This side doesn't even go underneath it. Yeah, man, this should be, I think, a game changer. And uh, the lines that did leak the most on me were the wastegate lines. Uh, cool lines, that is. So I'm thinking maybe just trying it without the wastegate lines, setting it up in a way that I could quickly maneuver it, which if I had this room, I should be able to take the wastegate off, change springs, blah, 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 pretty easy. Um, again, the exhaust manifold is going to basically be the same just with a side exit we'll have on it uh, for the wastegate. So yeah, this is looking pretty good. And I think in this process, I even want to, that catch can, right? Right, so the catch can's back there and I'm running like an OEM coolant reservoir over there. Maybe I can route a, a uh, I don't know, a catch can slash coolant reservoir right here. And that way then if I have the B series, again, I don't know why I keep saying that, but Speed Factory, Swirl Pot, uh, combo here, I can just route it right there. Catch can will be easier to maintain. The idea is it makes things easier to maintain. So like right now, if I had to just get to it, man, it's a it's tight. It's tight up against the brake lines with the, with the prop valve. My water meth line is right there. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm just trying to make things, if I can, make them a little bit easier. So my, you know, it is what it is. So hope this shows some insight so far what I'm doing. Again, I do a lot of random little things. I'm gonna try to just kind of record them. This may not have been a very good video as far as like what I've actually done, but I have made some progress. Uh, to get that bar where it's at, probably sure in the next video, I can't cut it now, but you can see right here, the garage is a disaster. But I I ended up cutting the center, this portion out, I had a line, ignored that, and I'm just cutting it straight out. And that way it allowed the Sirocco radiator to just drop even more, but my old EG size radiator I had was sitting here on the cross member or the traction bar. This right now is the same height. So it's the same height uh, that the EG1 was from the bottom, but obviously it's shorter in height. Um, in case anyone's curious, this has more, in theory, it's got a bigger area, surface area than the EG1. I think the EG1 I calculated like 192 inches squared, and I want to say this one was like... I don't know, 232 inches squared. So as long as it holds a little bit more coolant, it's got more surface area, which again, you should be able to see kind of hard, but right before, again, it kind of like cut off here that the radiator actually got hit with air. Now it goes all the way across. Might not seem like a lot, but it should be a lot. Plus, nothing's as close to it. So the hot bit should be further away. Uh, oh, I need a turbo blanket. Then I need to figure out something, man, for this downpipe. I know I keep flipping back and forth, but this is just how the brain operates sometimes. <laughs> uh, this is some other stuff I've been trying. It seemed to work pretty good. I did header wrap, but the problem with the header wrap is, and I'll show you a video, or the bottom of my downpipe sometimes hits the ground. It's, if anybody's running a three inch downpipe on a CRX and a B series, at the right height that I'm at, it just sometimes touches it. So when it touches it, then the uh, wrap just basically gets shredded and eventually peels. And my wastegate being an open dump was pointing straight at it. So I tried all kinds of things. So it may actually change up once this down tube or the dump tube goes into the exhaust. All right. Yeah, pretty stoked so far with how we're going. Time to clean up the garage. Really happy with the progress I made. I appreciate everybody for watching. Again, as usual, questions, comments, craziness that I'm doing, uh, throw it in the comments below. This video, I think, I don't even know what today is. I think today's the eighth. Ninth, so I'm gonna try to put this video up like right after I'm recording this. So I'm gonna sit on this for a day or two, three days. So if anybody does have any comments or things they want to throw at me that maybe can aid me in this process, uh, I'm all ears. And uh, yeah, appreciate everybody for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.